Chapter 22 The Clash Part 2 Oh my goodness, oh my goodness, oh my goodness! Fluttershy's panicked murmurs were barely audible beneath the sounds of battle outside. The crack of gunfire, clang of steel, and wet crunch of bone shattering under hoof all competed to be heard by Rarity's ears. The fires laughed and cackled over it all, the flames spiraling ever higher as they claimed more and more of the garden. The heat had begun worming through the stones, heating the air inside and sucking it free of moisture. Rarity winced as she rubbed a hoof over the stiff, dry hairs of her coat, and she tried not to look at the dry blood baked into her dress. There must be some way we can help. She said, It doesn't feel right sitting here while those ponies fight for us. I'm okay with sitting here, Fluttershy whispered. I don't want to fight. We should be safe here for now, Pontius said. Rarity turned to watch him pacing across the hall, his head fixed in the direction of the foyer. My father's soldiers are well disciplined. A cry of pain echoed down the hall. Rarity climbed to her hooves, ears angled towards the noise. Was that inside? The call came again, louder this time. Someone is calling for help, Pinky said. We must land it at once, Rarity said, starting forwards. Come along, girls. R- Lady Rarity. Pontius stepped in front of her, face grim. You should stay here where it's safe. Didn't I tell you before that I don't need coddling, darling? Rarity asked. She tried to step around him, but he matched her movements. Get out of my way, Pontius! My lady, I'm responsible for... Uh, uh... Pontius paused mid-sentence as his clothes began to glow a sparkling blue. With a smooth motion of her horn, Rarity picked him up by his clothes and moved him to the side. If you can follow behind and protect us, dear, I'd much appreciate it. She gave him a wry smile before turning back to the source of the noise and following it down the hall. She didn't have to walk far. A pair of soldiers in torn orange outfits had collapsed in the dining room. One lay still on the polished floor, his breath coming in quick bursts. The other leaned over him, four legs pressed over a wound in an attempt to staunch the bleeding. Oh my goodness! Fluttershy crossed the distance to the two soldiers in a single winged bound. What happened? <clears throat> Shot in the barrel, my lady. The healthy soldier grunted. Must have hit something bad way it's bleeding. Piggy Pie! Fluttershy shouted. Go to our rooms and get my critter kit, please! Pinky zipped up to her side and snapped off a crisp salute. Yes, ma'am! Rarity approached the injured soldier as Pinky disappeared in a flash of motion. A jagged hole, rimmed with blood, had been torn in his scarred breastplate. (sighs) We need to get this off of him. Hold him still, dears. Her horn glowed as she felt over the soldier's armor with her magic, found the belt securing it in place, and loosened them enough to pull the breastplate off. He grit his teeth and groaned as his wound was jostled. Pontius cleared his throat behind her. My lady, is there any way I can help? Rarity glanced up. Open the door to the foyer, would you, Pontius? Pontius gave her a puzzled frown, but complied. The indicated door opened with a quiet creak, and he jumped back with a yelp as a trio of large draperies tugged themselves free from their windows and raced into the dining hall, each glowing the soft blue of Rarity's magic. See if you can find any more wounded. Rarity continued, returning her eyes to the soldier bleeding beneath her. The window drapings turned lazy loops in the air above her as she ripped a piece off and held it out for Fluttershy, who began to apply pressure to the wound. Actually, Rarity looked up once more. Where does your father store his drinks? Pontius made for a cabinet near the head of the table. He keeps them in... Ah... He stopped mid-step as the cabinet's doors flew open and a line of bottles labeled an expensive script floated out. Thank you, dear. Now, could you see about those wounded? Rarity asked. Fluttershy cooed comforting words as she doused the injured soldier's bloody gash with alcohol. My lady, I cannot... Right, of course, you can't leave me. 
Silly me. Rarity rolled her eyes and gave a slight shake of her head. She looked up to the uninjured soldier, who was staring at the dancing drapes above him in open-mouthed awe. Excuse me, darling. Hello? The soldier blinked as if waking up, meeting her gaze. She gave him a sweet smile. Thank you. See if you can find any more wounded and bring them here. We'll take care of them. After a few moments, the soldier licked his lips and straightened up. Y yes, my lady. And she said any more wounded, Fluttershy added. She narrowed her eyes at the soldier, who took a step back. I don't care what color they're wearing. Understand? Uh... The soldier looked to Rarity. She gave him a little nod, still smiling. Do as she says, please. With a hasty bow, the soldier ran out of the dining room. Rarity returned her attention to her work, using her magic to fish the pieces of shrapnel out of the wound. Fluttershy drew in a deep breath. <sighs> Pinkie Pie! She bellowed. Rarity winced as her ears rang. Here! Pinky appeared beside them, laden down with a pair of saddlebags stuffed to the brim. I picked up some extras along the way. I hope you don't mind. As she spoke, she pulled a miniature cupcake out of one bag and stuffed it into the injured pony's mouth. He struggled for a brief moment, swallowed, and then seemed to relax. Oh, thank you, Pinky, Fluttershy said. She accepted the bags with a blush, setting them down on the ground and pulling out a needle, some colorful pink thread, and a roll of band-aids with the happy, smiling butterflies on them. Rarity, sensing that her part was done, stood back to give Fluttershy more room to work. She took a deep breath, content, and ignored the new bloodstains on her sleeves. Pontius approached her, his voice low. My lady, the Duke wouldn't approve of you helping Nettlekiss's soldiers. I'm not concerned with the Duke's approval, Pontius, Rarity said. She looked to the door to the foyer as a fresh pair of wounded limped into the dining hall. Just stand guard, please. Whatever he said in response, she made a point of ignoring it as she went to help the new arrivals get situated. Time began to blur together as Rarity allowed herself to get lost in the work, dolling out alcohol-soaked dressings to Fluttershy and clearing ruined clothing away from the injuries they hid. Pinky kept spirits up as the hall grew more cluttered, sometimes disappearing for minutes at a time before returning with an unconscious soldier on her back. More and more green began to mix in with the orange, and soon there was a pocket of a half dozen Nettlekiss wounded huddled in one corner the healthiest of them leering out at the rest of the room like watchful guardians. The sounds of battle outside grew quieter. The sweat soaked into her coat grew thicker, and the sleeves of her dress grew bloodier. Eventually, Rarity decided to just rip the sleeves off her dress altogether. Clearly, the universe did not want her to wear dresses anymore. She made a mental note to begin phasing less constricting articles of fashion into her wardrobe. Oh, it was no wonder that Titus and Pontius seemed to always be wearing armor. Make way! Make way! Rarity looked up as a group of four older soldiers trotted into the hall, a heavy set stallion splayed over their backs. She rushed over as they set him down, fresh bandages floating behind her. Where is he hit? His shoulder, one soldier said. He's lost a lot of blood. He was unconscious when we found him. A second soldier added. We failed him. Rarity frowned at the strangely servile tone in the soldier's voice. Several already treated wounded began to gather around, all whispering anxiously amongst themselves, and she was just about to tell them to give her some space to work when she rolled the wounded stallion over and realized who it was. Even unconscious, the fury on Duke Titus's face was palpable. A wide bullet hole had been punched through his armor on one shoulder, and one side was so heavily dented that it was a struggle for her to remove it from him, even with her magic. She spared a moment to examine the six thick gouges carved into the belly of the armor. They couldn't have been caused by a pony weapon, could they? 
Rarity's blood ran cold as the trench he'd fallen into while working fell away, replaced by a sudden, focused clarity. Griffin Claws. It couldn't be coincidence. Twilight had arrived that very day talking about the Griffin bounty hunter that had harried her across the horizon since their separation. Gava had something to do with this sudden attack. Rarity was sure of it. And I let Twyla walk out there alone. Rarity's breath hitched. Her face felt numb. Oh, stupid, stupid, stupid girl! Pinky's voice came to her as if through a haze. Rarity? Are you okay? Rarity looked up to meet her friend's concerned gaze. What about Applejack and Rainbow Dash? Had all three of them been captured while she was hiding inside? A double door that led deeper into the estate was flung open with a great crash. Rarity turned, staring in confusion at the dozen green-garbed soldiers that swarmed through it. That's odd, she thought. None of them are wounded. Then one of them reared up, hooves clad in studded steel, and crushed the skull of the wounded Titus soldier that stood to challenge them. Shouts of alarm raced through the room as ponies hobbled by bandages and burdened by wounds scrambled to grab discarded weapons before they were cut down. On one side of the room, the wounded Nettokes troops were suddenly turned on by the Titus soldiers they had been sharing their uneasy truce with. On the other, the disorganized and unequipped Titus wounded were cut down by the sudden rush of green outfitted ambushers. Rarity was bumped every which way by the crowd. There were too many for her to even hope to hold with her magic. <laughs> Pinkie Pie! She called. Fluttershy! She heard a quiet mule of a response, but couldn't find the source. She turned to something tugged on her dress, pulling her back. Pontius. Get to the rear, my lady, he said, pushing her away from the collapsing line. Rarity tripped over something, falling backwards. She didn't look, but it was wet and warm. Any confidence that she had developed hunting bandits in the woods and fending off bounty hunters in corner stores evaporated as her senses were overwhelmed by the rising pitch of battle. She heard a giggle and caught a glimpse of Pinkie Pie leaping through the air. Something reared over her, and she flung it away with a wild burst of magic. There was a loud crack, and the room began to fill with a thick white smoke. Rarity scrambled to her hooves, sucking in the smoke as she gasped for air. It dragged across her lungs like sandpaper, and violent shivers racked her body as she kneeled over once more. She rolled onto her belly, thinking to crawl to safety. The smoke wasn't so thick low to the ground. Once she got out of the chaos, she could find her friends. Rarity heard a solid thud as something collided with the back of her head, and her world fell into darkness. Anna took a moment to catch her breath as she came to an intersection between two hallways. She leaned against the wall, idly inspecting her charges. Three gifted, trussed up and ready for delivery. The gas had more than done its job, throwing the already chaotic dining room into a frantic free-for-all. And so she had slipped in and slipped out, quietly incapacitating her targets. What do you think? Anna asked, looking to the yellow pegasus shaking like a leaf beside her. She's even more adorable than Pony. Think we got some more time before they start searching the place? Fluttershy said nothing, although she did manage to squeeze out a high-pitched <coughs> past the rope gagging her muzzle. Yeah, you're right, Anna said. There's no time to waste. Come on, pick up your hooves. We're in this together. She tugged on Fluttershy's lead rope, guiding her through the halls at a brisk pace. Behind each of them, they dragged another pony. Pinkie Pie, 
covered in bruises and scratches, but otherwise no worse for wear, hummed a little ditty past her gag as she was dragged across the floor in Fluttershy's wake. Anna tried not to look at her, because every time she did, she was met with a disturbing lack of disgust, betrayal, anger, or fear. Even with the extensive ropes hog-tying her, Anna couldn't help but feel like she was being played. Lady Rarity was granted the pleasure of being Anna's dead weight. With all the blood soaked into her tattered dress, there had been a moment where Anna worried that she had taken some grievous wounds during the battle, but a quick inspection had shown all the blood to be belonging to other ponies. And so Anna had secured a small mask soaked in chloroform to her muzzle and hauled her along. She certainly wasn't going to risk the powerful mare waking up in transit, and the magic nullifying ring passed down by her father was one of a kind. She's a lot heavier than she acts, isn't she? She asked as she led Fluttershy through a dusty study. She received another squeak in response. Oh, relax. I'm sure you'll be fine. You seem like the sort to follow directions. Hold up. Anna raised a huff tugging the Pegasus with her behind a crooked bookshelf. Fluttershy shivered behind her in almost total silence as they waited for the sound of passing hoofsteps to rush out of earshot. All right, let's move. Out in the open once more, Anna traced the steps she had plotted to reach the exit point. The halls were empty, every soldier caught up in the fight out front, and every servant entrenched in the deepest bolt hole they could find. Leading the small team of Nettokus troops in the back door had been trivially easy. I wonder if any of them will make it back out. Look, almost there, Anna said, looking to Fluttershy and pointing to the shattered window ahead of them. Can you carry that weight, by the way? A collection of stuttered noises escaped Fluttershy's mouth that sounded almost like a squeaky, <laughs> Great, you go first, through the window here, come on. Bending down, Anna shouldered some of Pinkie Pie's weight and helped push her through the window behind Fluttershy. That done, she pulled Rarity up on her back and then climbed through. She landed in the garden next to Fluttershy without a sound. (sighs) Let me tell you, Fluttershy, don't get involved with nobles, she said. She pointed towards the flickering red glow blooming around the far corner of the mansion. See that? A few dozen dead, at least, over some silly feud. They're nothing but trouble. Be smart, and stick to yourself as best as you can. Mm -hmm. That's the spirit. You ready to fly? It was at that moment that Pinkie Pie began to tremble. Anna arched her brow, turning to the mare. Every part of her was shaking to its own tune, moving with vibration so powerful that she began to bounce up and down on her back. Hey, Anna said. Stop that! Mm! Anna looked to Fluttershy. Whereas the Pegasus had been frightened before, now she seemed to be stricken with terror. What is this? Anna demanded. She looked between the two mares. Do I have to knock you out? The rope came loose from Pinky's mouth shaken apart with the strength of her shivers. It's a doozy! Fluttershy let out a shaky whimper. Anna frowned, looking around. She recalled a single occasion when Pinky had referred to a doozy in the past tense. A faint alarm bell rang in her mind. Stand down, you rascal! Anna didn't even bother looking towards the newcomer. She flared her wings, slicing through the ropes that held her to her charges with the sharp claws on their tips and crouched low to take flight. She pushed off with force, ready to turn to her assailant as soon as she gained the altitude advantage. She squeaked as something yanked her back down by her tail. Anna hit the grass hard. An instant later, a hoof like iron was pinning her down. She looked up into the sweaty, freckled face above her. It growled down at her from under its hat. And just what do y'all think you're doing? Anna coughed. 
She flapped her wings in an attempt to gain leverage, but the iron hoof didn't budge. At last, she relented. She laid her head back and watched the stars twinkle as columns of smoke spiraled through the rainy night. I could ask you the same thing. The pony, easily recognizable as Applejack, arched a sage brow. Y'all are trying to abduct my friends. <sighs> Would have gotten away with it, too, if you weren't hanging out in the backyard. And a shot back. A quiet voice whispered something to the side. Both mirrors turned to Fluttershy. Did you find Rainbow? She's all right, Shy. Despite her and Gava's best attempts to make it otherwise. Applejack shot Anna a meaningful glare. Anna blinked up at her. Okay, don't blame that one on me. Applejack nodded over to Pinkie Pie, who is currently wriggling around the yard like an enthusiastic fish. You all right, Pinkie? Oh, 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 here it comes! Pinkie exclaimed. She bounced nearly two feet in the air. A doozy! She landed back on the ground with a squeal. She lay still. The rain pitter-pattered off of Applejack's hat. Is it over? Fluttershy asked. Oh. Pinkie Pie said. She looked to Anna, her voice suddenly somber. I'm sorry. Meeting Pinkie's gaze, Anna was overcome with a sudden wave of dread. An instant later, a flash of brilliant lavender lit the night sky. The bushes whispered their alarm as a wave of hot air rolled over the estate. Anna looked up, and for the second time in her life, she felt her world drop out beneath her. Oh, fuck. She whispered as she watched her home fall out of the sky in two parts. She broke the ring. Get up, little flower. Twilight groaned as she blinked her eyes opened. The grain of the wooden floor she was lying on slowly came into focus. What happened? We were overpowered. You should not have held us back. A pulsing pain lingered in Twilight's horn, matched by a queasy nausea in her gut. She turned her head to look around and groaned as both maladies redoubled in strength. What did you do to me? I would have saved us, just as I saved us from the creature of fire. It's your cowardice that brought this. She took a deep breath, closing her eyes and turning her senses inwards. Her magic had built up inside of her. It had been summoned for a spell and built up in preparation, only to be forced haphazardly back down with nowhere else to go. It still skulked about within her, leaving her with a sickening case of arcane indigestion. She opened her eyes and tried to lift a hoof to her horn, only to be stopped by the chains tying her legs together. She winced as the lynx cut into her fetlocks, jerking her hoof back. Twilight went to tug on the chains with her magic, and nothing happened. A spike of panic drove itself into her heart as she tried again. She put more power into the third attempt, her breath coming in quick gasps, and noticed a white glow coming from her horn, in place of the usual comforting lavender. Right. The ring. She remembered the brief glimpse she'd gotten of the runes engraved on it dampening enchantments. We could break it. Together, no prison can contain us. Twilight grit her teeth, deigning not to dignify the suggestion with a response. Instead, she focused on her surroundings, moving slowly so as not to cause her nausea to act up. She was in a bare wooden room, with a sparse spread of hay scattered over the floor. A steady swaying sensation in her gut told her that she was in an airship, and the creak of the wood reinforced the conclusion. 
rain could be heard bouncing off the hull. She rolled over. A narrow wooden hallway waited on the other side of the set of sturdy bars. A thin unicorn stallion with a cool blue coat was seated within, his eyes fixed on her. Several seconds passed while Tala waited for him to say something. She ended up speaking first. Where am I? The stallion arched a brow. You don't recognize it? Twilight frowned. She scanned the little prison once more, searching for anything familiar, but came up blank. Should I? Huh. Interesting. The stallion fished a sugar cube out of a cup by his side and popped it into his mouth. He nearly killed me here, along with everybody else on board. Oh. This is Gavish ship. There you go. The stallion's head bobbed in a slow nod. The silence returned. Twilight grunted as she tried to twist out of her chains, but they held her firm. You're a lot weaker than that cow pony. Twilight glared up at him. Set us loose! The other demanded. We will show his corpse true strength! What? The stallion asked. I'm just stating the facts here. Why are you doing this? Twilight asked, returning to her futile attempts at escape. Doing what? Holding me here! Working for that monster Gava, any of it! Twilight huffed as her anger began to bleed into sorrow. She let her head fall back to the floor and tried to stifle her tears. <gasps> What did I do to deserve this? Whoever said it was about you? Twilight sniffled, looking at the stallion through teary eyes. He leaned back and rubbed a hoof on his chin. Okay, maybe it's a bit about you, he admitted. But you're taking it too personally. Gabba likes chasing things. It's just in her nature. You're a hard catch, and that gets her excited. She'd lose interest the instant she caught you. He shrugged. The rest of us are just kind of following along. In a quiet voice, Twilight asked, What's your name? The stallion arched a brow. Top gallant. My name is Twilight Sparkle, she said. Why are you doing this, Top gallant? Top Gallant blinked. He regarded her with some surprise for a moment, and then broke out into a quiet chuckle. <laughs> what are you trying to do, charm me? I'm not going to let you out because you asked what my name is in a sincere tone. Twilight could feel the other's irritation as it rolled around inside her. End this charade! Give yourself over to me, and I will grant us freedom over this worm's corpse! Twilight closed her eyes as her lips curled back into a snarl. Shut up! I don't need your help! You needed it to save us from the creature of fire. You killed her! I would have rather died! Bold words from the little flower that summoned me to save her when faced with death! Her snarl turned to a growl. You're wrong. She blinked her eyes open, instinctively raising a hoof to cover her mouth as she realized she had spoken aloud. She winced as the chains pulled her leg back. Top Gallant cocked his head. Okay, honestly, I'm not even sure how to react to that. Twilight turned on him with a glower. He looked back with a curious bemusement that only fanned the flames of her outrage. After several seconds, she spoke. Where are my friends? Top Gallon didn't say anything. He just held her gaze as he slowly pulled another sugar cube out of his cup and popped it into his mouth. Answer me! Twilight screamed. She struggled in vain against her chains, filling the hall with the sound of the jingling links and her own impotent snarls. 
Why should I? He asked. She paused, her breaths coming in heaving gasps as her ears angled towards him. You're my prisoner and my job is to watch you. What reason could I possibly have to answer your questions? He is wasting our time. Why do you insist on letting this mongrel toy with us? Twalik drew still. She stared at him with as much hatred as she could muster. The steady beat of the rain against the ship's hull grew stronger. If you don't answer me, Al, I'll break out of here and make you. Top Gallant just continued to watch her with that same cool gaze. He licked his lips before picking out another sugar cube. Twilight clenched her jaw. She assumed that Gavaship didn't have multiple brigs, and therefore her friends couldn't be stashed elsewhere aboard it. They either had not been captured yet, or had been and were being taken off to Celestia New Ware. Perhaps they were fighting even still. Perhaps Applejack had finally taken one wound too many, or Rainbow Dash had pushed things too far. Her pulse began to quicken as she imagined Gava killing a cowering Fluttershy just to make a point, or Rarity lying in the grass in a blood-soaked dress, or Pinkie Pie's cry of shock when she ran out of luck. You understand, don't you, little flower? It's the only way. It's the only way. How could she sit there on the cold wood of her cell, straining against iron chains with hooves used to idle days beneath open books? Could she look her friends in the eyes and tell them she had done everything she could when all she had done was ask her jailer, one of the very ponies that just spent weeks tracking her across Acrestria, to explain himself? Yes. Release the magic inside us. She closed her eyes. The fading ink in Twilight's horn resurged as she began to draw upon her magic. Basic magic safety taught that one should never call on magic without a plan for how to use it, and Twilight cast this aside. She did not know how she would use the magic, but she knew that she needed it. Her friends needed it. Princess Luna still asleep aboard the Argo needed it. And wherever Celestia was, she would need it too. Who are you? I'm your mentor. I'm your guide on the path to our true potential. Uh, what are you doing? Twilight opened her eyes. She was still in chains on the ground, but a pale white glow from the base of her horn was flickering around the room. The glow began to flash brighter, highlighting the concern in Top Gallant's eyes as he stood to regard her. Please, don't hurt my friends. We wouldn't dream of it, little flower. The ship groaned around her. Twilight's horn burned with energy as the white glow was joined by a high-pitched keening wail that seemed to come from every direction. Hot, sticky tears dripped down her cheeks. Top Gallant shoved himself back against the far wall, sugar cubes bouncing everywhere as he knocked his cup over. <gasps> what the fuck? Twilight turned to meet his wide eyes. Run! He nearly tripped over his hooves as he rushed out of sight, voice raised in a shaky shout. <laughs> Everybody get off! Twilight could feel it now. The other stretched and grew inside her from the small ball of darkness that had lingered in her gut ever since she first drew its strange magic inside of her. It filled her whole body out, reaching down to the tips of her hooves and the end of her muzzle. It touched every part of her, soaking her in its chill warmth. It stopped only at the base of her horn. She marveled at the strength of the barrier. The ring on her horn would have been a powerful item even in her own time, and a small part of her was saddened by its coming fate. She wondered how Gava had come to acquire it. 
Nothing can match our power. She was a giant, trapped inside a paper prison. With a thought, it was brushed aside. The ring shattered. The other's gleeful laughter echoed in her mind as it reached the tip of her horn. The blinding white glow turned lavender, broken only by red-tinged tendrils of blackness. (laughs) 